Hello everyone and welcome to Split Second. Do you know what day it is? It's Friday the 13th, so we play some band commanders to terrify you with their scary power. That and today is the first day of Tier 1 Con, so if you are close by, come meet us and maybe play a game. Don't forget, we also have a giveaway running throughout August. This week, Late picked up Braids, Cabal Minion. Bal is on Eraio, Soratami Ascendant. David is on Ace of Shadow, Leovold, Emissary of Trest. What else? An Elder is on Grizzlebrand. Before we see the starting hands, we will now show you the details of our giveaway. We have two prizes for two lucky patrons, to be drafted in the beginning of September, so you have one month to be eligible to enter, by becoming a patron of any tier, or for a juicier prize, a stack breaker. Our first prize will be randomly given to one of our stack breakers, and includes a foil promo pack from Kaldheim and D&D sets, as well as a normal pack from D&D and three pretty buy a box promos. After the first prize is raffled, we have a second one, to be drafted between any patron of any tier, and it includes a foil promo pack of Kaldheim and two regular promo packs from D&D, as well as these promos. These prizes were graciously sponsored by our LGS Arena Porto. Leite is going first and he kept his first 7 with a single swamp, but adding the Lotus Petal and Mox Opal, that could require any other fast mana artifact from the top to be able to cast Braids turn 1, or at least turn 2, maybe. Defense Grid is mainly protection and Crucible of Worlds allows him to recur the same land each turn and stay even on resources, as well as with Dreadhorde Invasion, as long as he has life he will be able to maintain Braids. Feying Omnipotence is another card aimed at stripping his opponent's resources. Ball also kept his first hand that might be able to flip Iraya turn 2. He has two islands, Mana Vault for Ramp and a Preordain and Brainstorm for card selection, Mental Misstep for some protection and Teferi Master of Time to dig for game-ending pieces. David mulligan once and found quite the decent hand, Lenore Wastes, Misty Rainforest and Wooded Fort Hills for Lands, with an Elves of Deep Shadow for Ramp, Sylvan Library for extra card draw and Dark Deal already at hand to strip everyone else's hands. If Leovold doesn't stick, he also has Notion Thief as a replacement. Finally, Elder was unlucky to have to mulligan down to 5, but still found quite the ramped up hand. Two swamps alongside Prismatic Lens, Thrain Dynamo and Mana Vault. Finding another swamp allows him to cast his 8 mana commander as early as turn 4, and start drawing stuff from there. He sent to the bottom Reliquary Tower and Chrome Mox. Ready for this match? Late starts his turn with a swamp, and then casts a Lotus Petal. He follows it with a Mox Opal and passes, not having found another fast mana rock. Bal draws and shouts at his top deck. He plays an island and casts his drawn Jeweled Lotus. He follows it with his commander, Eraio Soratami Ascendant. He thinks for a bit and goes for it, casting a Brainstorm and holding priority, casts a Mental Misstep on it, triggering Eraio to be flipped as the fourth spell was being cast. No one responds and his Jeweled Lotus single-handedly changed the course of this game. Bal passes and David simply plays a Misty Rainforest and passes as well, as now everyone will need to throw a ship spell under the bus to have something else resolve. Elder plays his Swamp and also passes. Late top decks and LED, which unfortunately came one turn too late, as he could have cast Braids last turn with it. He still cast it and is countered by Iraya's Essence. He then sacks his Petal to cast Dreadhorde Invasion, as he is now aiming to slowly beat Bal to death. At his end step, David cracks his Misty Rainforest for a tropical island. Bal draws, plays an island and casts his Mana Vault, finishing his turn. David plays in Lenoir Wastes and sends Elves of Deep Shadow under the Arius bus. This way he is able to cast Carpet of Flowers. However, as a mono blue deck, Bal responds with a Force of Will, pitching Preordain, so that David doesn't have too much mana to sacrifice the first spell every turn. It's Elder's turn and he ponders his options, eventually he plays a Swamp and passes. Late's Dreadheart Invasion triggers in his upkeep, losing him one life and amassing one. He draws and plays his Swamp, and also passes. Bal draws and casts Teferi, Master of Time, upticking him right away and discarding a Mana Crypt, as he could lose to it and late his army quite easily. It's David's turn and he plays a Wooded Foothills that he cracks for… an Underground Sea? Yes, it was a mistake we only noticed while editing. David then casts a Gitaxian Probe, paying 2 life and is countered opening way for him to cast his commander, Leovold, Emissary of Trest. In response, Bal activates the fairy, drawing and discarding Mox Opal. David passes and Elder now plays another Swamp. He casts Lion's Eye Diamond that is countered by Iraio, and then he is able to cast Mana Vault, followed by Prismatic Lens, and passing. On his end step, Bal upticks the fairy and discards an island. Late amasses once again and goes straight to combat, pressing the fairy with the army. He passes and Bal upticks the fairy in his end step, discarding a Junto Stakes. 
He goes to his turn, takes one from the vault, and plays a Cephalid Coliseum before passing, as he can't draw more with his Teferi. David plays the Gemstone Caverns and casts a Ponder, being countered by Uriah's Essence. This way he is able to cast Sylvan Library, and Bal responds with Teferi, discarding a Jeweled Amulet, and Library resolves. David then attacks Teferi with Leovold and passes. Elder is still in a tight corner, so he sends a Swiftfoot Boots under the bus, and follows that with a Thrain Dynamo before passing. In his end step, Bal activates the fairy, discarding an island. Later masses in his upkeep and then attacks the fairy with the army. Bal upticks the fairy before damage and discards an island. Blade then passes and Bal gets to his turn. He takes one from the vault and top decks a Rhystic Study and feels conflicted between both of his enchantments in hand, but eventually casts an Arcane Laboratory, creating a lock that has only two ways of being broken, killing him or David finding an abrupt decay before Bal finds his own spell Skite. He passes and David understands his position. He pays 4 life to draw one extra from the library. He plays a command tower and attacks the fairy, while updicks it one last time, discarding his rhystic study as he drew something better. David passes and Elder pays to untap his mana vault before drawing and simply passing. Late amasses and turns his army sideways as everyone tries to fasten gameplay to kill Baal, who, in his turn, takes one from the vault, simply draws and plays a tapped mystic sanctuary before passing as well. David keeps it safe, drawing only one extra card, paying 4 life with the library, and he finally found his abrupt decay. He fires it onto the arcane laboratory, as Arayu stopping everyone else is also helping him. Arayu's essence triggers, but abrupt decay can be countered, so the lock is broken. He then plays an untapped overgrown tomb and proceeds with a dark deal. David and Elder both have two cards in hand, Leith has 7 and Bal has 1, which means Bal won't even draw a card from this, so he fires his snap onto Leovold so the other two players can still be in the game to maybe help with David, as he has the most mana and card draw available. Leovold triggers and David top decks like a god, a Pact of Negation. The wheel resolves and everyone but Bal discards their hands and draws a single card. David then passes and Elder plays a Swamp and passes, as he has nothing to throw under the bus for his Grizzlebrand. Later masses one and sends his army at David, pressuring his life so he can dig deeper with Library. He then passes and Bal simply takes one from the vault, draws and passes as well. David pays for the Pact of Negation and finds nothing great with the library, so he doesn't pay any life, drawing only one card, before passing as well. Helder does the draw go as well and we are amassing Leite's army once again. Who would have thought these commanders are broken enough to be banned? Leite attacks David once again with his army, which has lifelink now. David ponders for a bit and eventually blocks with Leovold. Late passes and on his end step, Ball fires a mystical tutor for a gush, hoping to refill his hand at last. He takes another ping from the vault, draws the gush and floats two blue mana before casting it, returning the tap islands to his hand. He then casts a mystic remora, plays an island and passes. David now pays 8 life to draw two extra cards. Plays a verdant catacombs that he cracks for a bayou, this time is correct. He ponders for a bit, but decides to pass, hoping late starts pressuring Helder as well, so he can't draw so much stuff. Elder plays a Crystal Vein and then goes ahead, casting Helm of Obedience, which is countered by Uriah's Essence and gives Bal a card through Remora. He then casts his commander, Grizzlebrand, cracking the Crystal Vein to have one spare colorless mana for some rock. In response, Blade casts a Vampiric Tutor in order to trigger Remora to see if Bal can find something to deal with it. However, creatures are harder to be dealt with in the stack. The Hell Vault is open, and from there, Elder pays 7 life to draw 7 cards. He does it again, drawing 7 more, and then again for a total of 21 extra cards. He then casts a Mox Diamond, triggering Grimora, but unable to pay. He discards a Swamp and then casts Sacrifice, sacrificing Grizzlebrand as an additional cost. Remora triggers and he can't pay, however, Bal responds with a miscast, following his attempts at winning. You might be wondering why he would do such a thing, and he wanted to cast Curse Familiar with that mana, and have plenty of mana from his drawn cards to cast Grizzlebrand again and go all in from there but now he goes to clean up and discards a bunch to hand size. Later masses once more and goes straight to combat, sending his big army at David, as he fears Sultai way more than Mono Black. Before blockers, David fires a mystical tutor, triggering Irayo and Remora, not paying, and it's countered, in order to fire his chain of vapor onto the army token. Remora triggers and he doesn't pay. Late chooses not to copy as he is still way behind, so he simply passes. Bal's Remora filled his hand, so he still pays one more for another turn cycle, and takes one ping from the vault. He plays a Misty Rainforest and cracks it for an island. He then casts a Ponder, and not liking the top 3, he shuffles before drawing. He still casts a Tormod Script before passing the turn. David is tight with his life total, so he only draws one card with the library. 
that Tormod Script came right in time to stop the vid from winning as he has a Yogmoth's will in hand. So the vid is thinking hard of ways to get out of this sticky situation. He eventually sends a Vampiric Tutor to be countered, giving Balikar through Remora, so he can safely cast Leovold again to have a blocker for the army tokens as well as taxing Helder's attempts at going all in. He passes and Helder takes one from the Mana Vault. He ponders on what ways to array his essence and eventually fires a Grim Monolith, also giving Bali a card. He is then able to cast his Scourge Familiar before passing. Later Mass is once again now starting from zero, and finally found his third land drop, a Polluted Delta, which he cracks for a snow covered swamp, just to mess with Bal's editing process. Bal's complaints go on the stack and resolve as Late finishes his turn. Bal still pays for the Remora as he has a plan for it, which is to draw the card he will put on top with the Mystic Sanctuary. It enters and he targets Snap, to have the vid in check in case he goes for another wheel effect. He still casts, sends his Divining Top and passes the turn with a full hand of 7. David digs the top 3 but only draws one card, and what a card! He casts Yogmoth's Wheel, triggering Mirayu and Remora, and Bal draws the Snap. It's countered, so he is now able to cast Teferi's Puzzle Box, which, alongside Leovold, means that at each player's draw step, that person draws the card for the turn, then the Puzzle Box trigger resolves putting all cards in that player's hand on the bottom, and Leovold prevents them from drawing any more, making it so that each player will only have a window to cast an instant speed card before the trigger resolves, and then go hell-bent. Remora triggers, but thanks to Leovold, Bal can't draw. David tells Bal he could let it stick and bounce Leovold in Late's end step, just so Helder and Late go hell-bent. But the inability for Bal to bounce the artifact once Leovold comes down again deters him from following this game plan, so he responds with a fierce guardianship. David sadly passes and on his end step, Eller fires a demonic consultation, which is countered and Bal can still draw from Remora. He follows that with a Vampiric Tutor, for an Aetherflux Reservoir, hoping to gain some life once he slams Grizzlebrand again. He goes to his turn and pays to untap his Mana Vault. He draws and plays an Ancient Tomb, and then activates his Curse Familiar, discarding two cards for Double Black to cast Soldevi Adnate, which is countered by Arius Essence. He then recasts his Grizzlebrand with a single card in hand, the Reservoir, in hopes to storm off once Leovold leaves the field. He then attacks the Vid with his Familiar and passes. Late amasses and goes to combat, as it has been all his game, unfortunately. He sends the 2-2 at Bal and passes. In his end step, Bal activates the top, rearranging it before going to his turn. With a lack of shuffling effects at the moment and the top 3 being a bit bad, he still pays for the fish. He takes one from the vault, plays an island and simply passes. David draws only one from the library and is forced to pass, waiting for his expected demise. Helder does pay to untap his mana vault and jumps straight into combat. He sends Grizzlebrand at David and Scourge Familiar at Bal, who ponders for a bit if it's worth to save David as Leovold is also stopping him from drawing fuel. Eventually, Bal fires Snap onto the Scourge Familiar. He untaps the two lands and then activates his Cephalid Coliseum targeting Helder to draw three and discard three, and due to Leovold, he simply discards his three cards in hand. Damage then connects and David is our first casualty. Helder gains 7 life and activates Grizzlebrand drawing 7 cards. He then casts a Dark Ritual, triggering Arayu and Remora, to which Bal responds by activating the top to see one card deeper. Bal draws and the ritual is countered. Helder then plays a Swamp and pays 7 more life to draw 7 more cards. He finds and casts a Bubbling Muck, triggering Remora and unable to pay. This also affects Late, but he is still lacking the resources. Helder then casts a Demonic Tutor, triggering Remora again, and Bal ponders for a bit, but lets it resolve. Helder gets an Opposition Agent, which he casts right away, unknowingly stopping Bal from winning in his next turn. He still casts Priest of Geeks, getting 3 black when it enters, and using those to cast Priest of Yogmoth, as he wants the more blockers he can get to preserve his life total. With the last floating mana, he casts Imperial Plate, triggering Remora, and when it enters, he equips it onto the Priest of Geeks before passing with 7 cards in hand. Late amasses once again, plays an Ancient Tomb and goes to combat, sending the army at Bal before passing. Bal finally lets the fish go and activates the top in his upkeep, hoping to find a Cyclonic Rift. And he does! He takes one from the vault and now regrets letting the plate resolve. He plays an Ancient Tomb and then casts a Cursed Totem before discarding to hand size and passing. Elder once again pays to untap his mana vault. He ponders for a bit on what bounce options Bal would have, and eventually sends his two big dudes at Bal a 10-10 and a 7-7. In response, Bal casts a Cyclonic Rift on the Priest and holds priority to cast Narset's Reversal on the Rift, sending it to his hand and keeping the same target. Helder gains 7 and goes to his second main phase, playing a Cabal Coffers. He then casts his Priest of Geeks, which is countered by Irayo. He follows that with the Rings of Brightheart, which means he could pay 7 life to draw 14, in case the Cursed Totem leaves the board. 
so Paul responds to it with a force of negation, pitching a tank twister. Helder still equips the plate onto his priest and passes. Leighton masses once more and finds yet another land, Cabal's stronghold, all of them coming so late in the game. Late cast Chains of Mephistopheles, which is countered by Erayo, so he can finally cast Braid's Cabal minion. He still goes to combat and sends the army at Baal before passing. At Baal's upkeep, Braid's triggers and he sacrifices the Mana Vault, saving him one more life. He draws and plays an island before passing with his Rift ready to go off. In Elder's upkeep, Braid's triggers and he also sacrifices his Mana Vault. He goes to combat and sends the Priest and Grizzlebrand at Baal to force him to fire the Rift, which he does. This way, Elder is the first one to develop his board, after the Rift. In his second main phase, he casts Helm of Awakening, which is countered due to Erayo, and then activates Cabal Coffers for 5 black and with the other swamps, casts Grizzlebrand once again. He then plays Lake of the Dead, sacrificing a swamp and then uses it to sacrifice another swamp to add 4 black mana with which he casts Opposition Agent again, and then follows it with a Mox Diamond, discarding a Swamp, and then casts Imperial Plate again before passing. Late gets to his turn, casts Mox Opal to Arius Trigger and then casts Dreadhorde Invasion, and follows it with his commander again, Braid's Cabal Minion. In his end step, Baal activates Senses Divine in top and cries as he sees lands on top. In his upkeep, Braid's triggers and he sacrifices Cursed Totem to try to avoid being the target of Elder's Wrath. He casts Guile as a blocker and passes. In Elder's upkeep, Braid's triggers and he sacrifices Cabal Coffers as it no longer goes positive in mana. He draws and plays a City of Traitors, with which he equips Imperial Plate onto Grizzlebrand. He then attacks Baal with his huge demon, gaining 14 life in the process. No more countering stuff. In his second main phase, he casts Volrath's Dungeon. He then activates Grizzlebrand once and activates the dungeon enough times for Late to put his hand on top of his library, which leads to a concession, as Late has no single card in hand to deal with Grizzlebrand. GG. Thank you for joining us for today's match everyone, we hope this game was as fun for you as it was for Irayu countering all that stuff, even though she didn't win it. It goes to show how some commanders do deserve to stay out of the singleton busted format. We'd like to start the credits by thanking our current patrons, and especially Izanagi, Stefan, TG Rap, Mike Purr, Ayajimo, Uncrustable, Drunken Housecat, V, RJ, Heated Shield, Pina and Kidu Sex, our new stack breaker. If you want to support us, you can do so by liking this video, subscribing or by becoming a patron yourself. If you want to go through other Commander adventures, click one of the videos on the right. If you want to talk with us about our games or other EDH-related matters, join us on Discord. Join us again next week for a new set of Commanders and more decisive plays. See you all then!